After being a coach for many years, I created a training school for others who wanted to get into the profession of coaching, specifically those who had a helping professional background, like therapists, counselors, human resource people. That sense expanded because other people found us and said, well, I'm not a therapist, but can I take your training? And so we kind of look at their background and if they've had you know, basic good listening skills and rapport building skills and some professional expertise for a long period of time so that we don't start with uh, real basic stuff, we take them. And the classes are all taught telephonically um, in this country. I've got licensed uh, organizations in other countries that teach it as well live. But it's been something now just celebrated our 10th anniversary. And um, it's, I'd call it a whole person approach to life coaching because it, we know that if you coach anybody, even on leadership skills, you're going to get into other areas of their life. My background was an executive coach. I came through the door of psychology, I was a clinical psychologist, still am but I haven't practiced that for 10 years. And I really think that coaching is about helping people live beyond mediocrity, you know, not settling. Has the field of coaching moved into a new era, to a dimension where coaching is becoming accepted as a practice and as necessity? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. In the early years, it was like, you're a coach, what team, what sport? You know, and even life coaching it was kind of like, does that mean you dangle crystals over people or something? And, you know, all the weirdness. But no, it really today is seen as something that's viable. Uh, and people understand that my philosophy is that it's all life coaching, no matter if you call it executive coaching, leadership coaching, relationship coaching, uh, team coaching, because you're dealing with life. So p I tell my students, you may not put life coaching on your card if you want to get a, a gig with Hewlett Packard, but it is what you're doing. You are having conversations about the person's whole life. Um, I've written books on the subject. I created this training school. My philosophy through all of that is about the whole person. Um, and that's what's exciting. Do you have a coach yourself? Always. I've got one I pay for. I've got many that are at my beck and call because of the profession. Uh, there's a lot of coaches to be had. And I will always have a coach. Having been a psychologist, I say I will not always have a therapist unless I need one. Universities are preparing people for all kinds of professions, but the field of coaching is new. Would you invite people into this field? Is it an exciting field in your view? Oh, absolutely. And universities are now giving master's and doctoral degrees in coaching. When I wrote uh, my most recent book that came out two years ago, there was only two dozen universities worldwide that had a certificate program in coaching. Now I think there's over a hundred. So it's very exciting, and I think I would invite people into this because if you're already a professional, coaching is something that you can add to your, your bag of tricks. You can add to your continuum of service. So that's what we teach, how to add coaching to what you do. Some people may say, well, I want to be a coach. I want to close my therapy practice. I don't want to be a nurse anymore. I want to be a coach. So we offer both. Add it to what you do, become a coaching professional, or shift and become a professional coach. Is, is coaching rewarding? Well, it's rewarding both to the client and to the coach. What's exciting to me about this is it's, it's a really an egalitarian partnership where you're working with somebody to assist them in getting and living the life they want. At the same time, I'm partnering with them in a way that I'm learning as I go because I don't know what they want. I'm an expert on the coaching process. I'm not an expert on the person's life. It's more rewarding for me because it's fun. Uh, you get to see people really grow into spaces they didn't need to know they could go. And as opposed to psychotherapy, which I did for a lot of years, it's not about pain and angst. It's really about designing their future. Why would a leader benefit from having a coach? I think leaders need to have the opportunity to keep developing their skills. In today's environment especially, you've got to learn what you're learning while you learn it. You've got to keep up what you knew last week may not work today. So having a coach uh, on the side, a coach who can be with you, uh, give you that confidential, objective view, it's a no-brainer. The, the companies that are using coaches today do better. What would you like to add? One thing. I think the importance that the profession of psychology has influenced the profession of coaching. It's not that coaching is psychology, but the underpinnings of coaching are the philosophies that have come from humanistic psychology, from positive psychology. I gave a keynote in Australia and I titled it The Psychological Underpinnings of Coaching. You mean this stuff wasn't just made up? So I think that's what I want people to know, is that it's, it's grounded in theory, it's evidence-based, it's not just made up fluff, it's got long-time theories behind it, and today it's being applied to the new profession of coaching.